I designed this pear mat as a beginner project to teach you the nitty gritty of punch needle rug cooking. If you'd like to try making it yourself, it is available as a free download on my website or as a pattern on monk's cloth. We also have it for purchase as a kit with the pattern and all of the yarn. I often get asked what order to punch a piece. In this project, we are going to start with what's easiest, which is the border. Straight lines are the easiest to do. For our border, we're going to have two rows of punching. Next, we're going to do the pair, which will teach you how to do curves. We're going to do the lettering to learn how to do lettering, which, as you might notice, the letters are backwards. And we're going to do the leaf, the stem, and lastly, we'll do the background. For the two rows of our border, we're going to start by punching right on the black line. And for the second row, we're going to punch outside of the piece. When I start, I don't like to start on a corner because if you do, you wind up with a um, raw end of clipped yarn showing in the corner. And it looks really pretty to have just loops in the corner. Your end, um, if you put it anywhere but the corner, really doesn't show. It just gets hidden. So don't start on a corner. You can start anywhere else. I like to make sure that I have lots of slack yarn, and I just pull a few handfuls out and put it right up here out of the way. The yarn goes through the punch so quickly when you're punching that I find if I don't have slack, my um, yarn will get um, caught and it will pull my loops out. Also, don't hold your hand around your yarn. You want your yarn to feed freely over the back of your hand. And make sure that your yarn isn't snagged under your frame, that you're not leaning on it in any way. And if you have any pets, make sure that a cat or dog isn't playing with it or pulling on it. When I start, I like to start with the thumb trick, and I do that by just having a very short end sticking out of my punch. I'm going to put my thumb on top and go ahead and punch it in. So that starting end is now on the other side of my rug, which is the top side of the rug, the finished side that you actually walk on and I'm working here on the back side of the rug. I'm going to use my gauge and have six stitches per inch. That's going in every second hole of the backing or every other hole, depending on how you want to think about it. And that's just going one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And that will give you your six stitches to the inch. After a while, you won't have to count anymore. It will just become automatic. You'll get muscle memory. That will help you to get nice, beautiful, even stitches. Remember to always punch all the way down as far as it will go. And when you lift up, don't lift your needle too high or you'll pull out your loops. As long as you go all the way down each time and don't lift up too high, you'll have beautiful loops. When you get to the corner, you want to turn your needle while it's down in the backing. And I'm right-handed, so I find it easiest to go from right to left. If you're left-handed, it feels more comfortable to go from left to right. But just do what feels natural. Some people like to go up in one direction and down in the other. There's no real right or wrong. Now, I'm not counting holes anymore. If I had to count holes, I would just find it so tedious. So instead, I'm measuring my stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. 
One thing that really helps is with your other hand that you're not punching with, push down on your backing and it actually makes the cloth even tighter, which makes it much easier to punch your needle down in. When you get to a corner, sometimes you have to decide whether to take one stitch that's too long or two that are a little bit short. You always want to err on the side of taking two that are short. But that one, I think, is still just about the right side. I'm going to turn while my needle's down in. And if your stitches aren't exactly six, if they're five and a half, I would say go ahead and leave it and keep going. Just try and adjust to get them six as you go. So I am almost to where I started. You could jog over and then go out, but I don't like to do that because you wind up um, with an extra loop. My two rows have two rows of loops. If you jog over, you'll actually wind up with three loops in one spot. And it sounds like a little thing, but it actually um, does stand out. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to end in this row. And I'm going to end in the exact same hole that I started in. So I'm going to put my needle right in there, right in that very same hole. Lift my needle up, pinch my thread, slide the needle out of the way, cut it flush, and push that end through. Make sure to always push these through as you go because you can see that's so short. If you didn't do it now, you'd never find it again. I'm going to push that through. And now we're going to turn it over to the front of the rug. And you can see you have two ends. This little short end is where I did the thumb trick. That makes a nice short little end. The other is where I stopped. Have a look at your loops. You want to make sure that they're all the same height, that none are too short. If you have a short loop, it means that either you lifted your needle up too high or you didn't push down all the way when you were punching. Also, have a look at the sort of direction of your loops. See how these are all nice and straight and lined up and these are wiggly? Don't worry about the wiggly ones. What you can do is just straighten them up with your hand. And also when you put in your second row, it's going to make those beautiful and straight. Your first um, row standing all by itself is always a little wonky looking, so don't worry about that. For our outer row of our border, we also don't want to start on a corner. You can start anywhere else. I'm also going to start with the thumb trick again with my nice short little end, my thumb on top. And I'm going to just go in so that the side of my needle is grazing the last row of stitches, right about there. When you are making your second row, as far as how close to put your rows, you don't want to jam over too close like that and sort of double up against them. That's too overpacked. You also don't want to have your needle out here so that you have uh, white spaces showing between your rows. You want your two rows just to graze each other. I'm going to push that back together like that. And we're just going to go along so the side of our needle is laying next to our last row of stitches. I'm going to have six rows of stitches per inch. Did you hear that sort of splitting noise? That was my needle going in between rows of um, the threads, because these are double monk's cloth threads, but it won't hurt a thing. Now I'm not going to worry about staggering my stitches. They're just too little. So some places they'll stagger a little, some they'll be side by side, but that's just fine. I'm going to make sure I have plenty of slack. 
and just try and get the edge of my needle next to my last row. Now here, I'm actually going to go one little stitch past, like that, and then pick it up again, and that gives me a nice square corner. Oh, but look, that's actually, I've gone a little bit too far. See how that will leave a gap? So I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to make two smaller stitches. Sometimes you have to decide whether you want one long stitch or two that are smaller. You always want to err on the side of having two that are smaller. So don't be afraid to take it out so you can get it just how you want it. And I'm just going to work my way around. I'm getting a little big. I was having five to the inch. So I just pull it out and adjust. It's wonderful. If you don't count the holes, you can go so much faster. But it just means you want to measure more. And I'm coming up to my end. And I'm just going to go right in the very same hole where I started, lift my needle up, pinch my thread, slide the needle up out of the way, cut it off flush, and push that right into the same hole. So you've got two ends in the same hole which are now on the front of the rug. And there they are. And if you want to, you can clip those ends off. I like to clip as I go. And what you want to do is just put a little bit of tension on it when you clip. You just want to hold it with your other hand put a little bit of tension on it, clip it, and it just kind of disappears in there, like that. We used two rows of six stitches per inch on the border to make a nice strong edge for a rug. For your outline of your pair, we're just going to do one row of a slightly darker color, and we're going to use six stitches again, but this time not for strength, but for good definition. Six stitches per inch makes a nice unbroken line that will give you a crisp divider between the green and the purple. To outline our pair, we can start anywhere because there are no corners, so I'm just going to start right here. And I'm going to do my six to the inch. Now, I can't count now because holes on a diagonal are actually further apart. So I can't measure by counting holes. So I am going to measure with my gauge and make sure I have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Now you'll notice here that I didn't start with the thumb trick. So I have my little end on this side. Not a problem. We're just going to push it through to the front of the rug. And then we can go ahead and end right in that hole. Lift the needle up. Pinch your thread. Slide the needle out of the way. Cut it nice and close and push it through. So on the front of the rug, we'll have those two ends. And I'm going to wait to clip those off until they're surrounded. I think that will make a perfectly nice pear shape. So when you go to fill in an object like a pear, you get to decide which direction you want to go in. You could make horizontal rows back and forth or vertical rows. You could go on the diagonal. It's really, it's up to you. What I like to do for a, a natural object like a pear is to actually follow the pretty shape of 
the pear itself and just go round and round and spiral my way until I get right into the middle. To fill in the pear, we're going to use four stitches to the inch. So you're going to make bigger stitches. It's a little bit hard to change gears from six to the inch to four. So just give it your best shot. And again, you can pull out if you're not happy with your stitch size. There's no corners, so you can start anywhere. And you just want your two rows of stitches to lay side by side. And there we go, four to the inch. I like to use both hands when I'm punching, and my left hand isn't as strong as my right hand. I'm right-handed, so with my left hand, I do it a little bit differently. I actually use my middle finger to nudge the punch needle forward. And that works really well for me, but you don't have to do that. You can turn your frame, but I love being able to use both hands. It saves on wear and tear on your hands and wrists, and I really like never having to turn the frame. If I'm working on a big frame, I can't turn it. When I learned to spin, my spinning teacher said, well, it's new and awkward with your dominant hand. Why don't you teach both hands at once? So I suggest you give it a try. Now I'm just going to bypass where I started. I'm not going to end in that hole. I only do that on an outside edge where I want a nice crisp definition. But now I'm just filling in. So I'm just going to spiral my way in and go right past that. And I'm trying to stagger my stitches like bricks. So I'm going right next to the middle of that loop and then right next to the middle of that loop. So the beauty of it is if you've measured your first row and you know that they're the right size, you can use them for your guide the next time. And they look so pretty staggered. They just fit nicely together. It's impossible to always stagger them. But you just want to try and do it wherever you can. It's more that you don't want to line them up all in straight rows. If they were all lined up, it would look like a machine had made it. Okay, this is what I call a dead end. I've worked my way into a corner and I can't get out without jumping over all those stitches to get to here. And you don't want a big long stitch like that. If this were a rug, it would make a weak point. Um, being taller than the other stitches, it would actually uh, wear out and um, come undone, pull out quite easily. So don't ever jump like that. What we're going to do, we're actually going to end it right there. And push that end through. So when you have a dead end, instead of waiting to come around and get stuck in it, go ahead and start in that dead end. So we're going to start right there. You don't want to start too far over or you'll have a gap. Start nice and snug right in there. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. As you can see, when I come up here, I'd be stuck in another dead end. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn this shape into an oval and just go round and round. And then I can keep going without ending all the time. And then I won't have to stop and start so often. And I'll go back and fill in that little bit when I'm done. Now 
I've left a little bit too big of a gap there, so I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to make one little baby stitch in there. And then I think I'm going to come right into the middle to end it. Well, no, that stitch is a little too small. I'm going to put two nice even stitches in there. And fill that in with two more stitches. And there I am, ready to end it. Cut it off, push that end through to the front of the rug. And now I'm going to fill in my little triangle here. I'm going to start right there. And there we go. If you have a little um, gap like that, you can easily get rid of it just by going like that. Any little gaps that you have, you can close up. And that gives you a really nice, tidy look. We're going to turn it over. And you'll see where I've stopped and started. This may look like a loop that's too long, but it's really an end that I've pushed through that hasn't made it up yet. So if you just pull on it gently, there it is. That also looks like a loop, but it's really my end. Now let's look, here's another tall loop. I bet that's an end as well. Yes, it is. Ah, now that is actually a loop that's too tall. And what happened was when I punched my needle in, it actually pushed out that loop. The tip of my needle pushed out that loop. So you can actually cut up, cut off a loop just like it's an end by holding it up a little bit and just clipping it like that. And it won't show at all. So any loop that's too long, and the end that's too long, you can just cut it off. Just remember to put a little bit of tension on it when you're clipping. And there's your pair. To punch my letters, I'm going to use six stitches per inch. That's the perfect size for anything that is just one row of stitches wide because it will make a nice unbroken line. So my letters will be nice and legible. You can start anywhere. I plan ahead so that I don't have to stop. I'll just punch around this way. And remember to make those stitches nice and small. The six to the inch. There's our P, and for our E, we're just going to start here. Nice little stitches. You want to make sure you leave room for your purple in between the top of your E. That's all there is to it. Now for our A.
And I noticed that when I drew my lettering in here that I didn't leave enough room between the tip of my R and my border to get enough purple in there. I want to get a couple of rows of purple in there, so I'm actually going to stop my R right about here. So feel free to adjust a pattern if you're working on it. And when I come to the top of this R, I actually need to end it. I'm just going to put four little punches in there. So on this side, it's nice and tidy. On the other side, I can guarantee you it's just going to be an absolute mess. So here is the right side of our rug. Can you believe that? It just looks terrible. It's got all of these ends sticking up, but once we get the background in there, I can show you how to clean it up. And believe it or not, it is going to look like that. For our leaf, I'm going to start with the vein. I like to do small detail first. I just find it's easier to put in the vein and then punch around it than it is to punch an area and leave a gap for something like that. So I'm just going to start with that vein. And I'm going to do six stitches per inch because it's a single line and I want nice definition. And I'm going to use this different green for the rest of my leaf. And I tend not to start with the thumb trick, personally. I didn't learn the thumb trick till I'd been punching for about 30 years and I just stuck in my ways. <laughs> This is a little tip for doing a sharp point like this leaf. You can actually go one stitch further. Here's the end of my drawn line. I'm going to do one more little punch and then I'm going to end it and it'll just exaggerate that nice point. And I'm going to finish outlining it with six to the inch. But now to fill in, I'm going to fill in with my four to the inch. And I'm just going to follow the shape of the leaf, go around the stem. And it's a little hard switching from six to four, so don't be afraid to stop and measure. So in an area like this, one stitch is too long and two would give you stitches a little smaller than the four to the inch, but that's okay. It's better to have two short ones than one that's too long. There'll be lots of little choices about, oh, what stitch size do I put here or there? Just give it your best guess. You can't go wrong. So this is kind of a dead end. Um, I can't get out of here without jumping over other stitches. And while I'm at it, I'm going to stuff this one in.
So, in this area, you need to decide whether you want to have two rows or one. Some people might even try to put in three. Just for fun, I'm going to try going right down the middle and see how it fills in. And you know, I think that's just fine because if I put two rows in there, it would be kind of overpacked. So I'm going to leave it like that, just kind of poke them a little bit to get rid of the white monk's cloth showing. And I just have a few little areas left. I've got that little gap. I don't think I'm going to fill that in either. I think I'm just going to close up that hole. Now here, that is kind of a big hole. So what I'm going to do to fill it in is I'm going to punch my needle down three times. You have to punch at least three times or you won't make a loop that will stay in place. Don't just punch once or twice. You've got to do three. So I'm going to make a much smaller stitch than usual and just go one, two, three, like that. So any little gaps like that, you can just close in. And a well-made punch needle rug should look as beautiful on the back as on the front and take pride in both sides of your work. Here's our finished leaf on the front side of the rug. Let's tidy it up. You'll notice that I have all the long ends where I've stopped and started. I also have these long loops, which are really just the ends that I pushed through from the other side that haven't made their way up yet. So I'm going to show you a little trick to speed things up to get all those ends to pop up. Instead of pulling them up one at a time, you can take the back of your scissors and just rub them. And see that? They just pop right up. And now you can clip all those ends just by holding them with a little bit of tension. Now if you have a bunch of ends side by side, never cut them in a clump or it'll really show where you've clipped. So cut them one at a time. Ah, here we have two strands of a three-ply yarn. So there's a little bit more here that hasn't popped up. You want to pull on that as well. There you go. Now you have all three strands of your yarn. If you left that one little strand in there, it would pop up later. So you want to make sure you get it now. That is also, I believe, an end that hasn't popped up. So we're just going to pull on it. There we go. Now, this is the extra end that we did to make a nice tip at the point. So we're going to make extra sure that we don't cut that too long or too short because we don't want to lose it. It looks funny now, but when you surround it, it'll make a nice point. And it looks like our vein has stayed a good shape. You can move things around in case it's gotten wobbly, but I think that looks pretty good just the way it is. I decided to make the stem two rows wide. You can see here there's two rows side by side. I could have just done one row, but I wanted it a little bit more substantial, so I put in two. And I'll show you here. I'm just going to start right at the base of the stem. I'm going to do six stitches per inch. And just do a little U-turn. And come back. And there we have it. That's all there is to it. Push those ends through. And there's your stem, your starting and stopping ends. Now doesn't that look awfully fat? Not to worry, when I'm finished punching around it, it's going to compress it into a nice little stem. 
to fill in your background. You have artistic license to do it any way you like. What I like to do is to follow the shape of the pear to accentuate that pretty shape because the direction of the background will show, especially with a nice variegated yarn like we're using. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the inside edge of the border once, around the pear once, and then around the letters once, and then I'm just going to meander my way around to fill the rest of it in. Because I've used two rows of six stitches per inch, I don't need to have another row of six per inch here because this is filling in. So I'm going to fill in this row and all the rest with four stitches per inch. You can start anywhere. I'm going to start right here. with my four stitches per inch. So when I get to here, I'm going to end right in the same hole where I started. I could jog over and then keep going, but I want to have a nice crisp purple edge against that green. So I'm actually going to punch right into that same hole and cut it and just stuff both of those ends through at once. So I've gone around the border once and now I'm going to go around the pair. So the top um, opening of my E I need to fill in and if you have a look you can see that the hole has sort of gotten squished closed so there is a little gap in there. I'm going to put in three um, punches so make sure you do three. I'm just going to go one, two, three, much smaller stitches than you would normally do. is a little bit bigger so I think I'm going to put um, four punches in there. One, two, three, four. And those are littler stitches than normal because we have to get four little loops in there to fill it up. So now that I've gone around everything once, I'm just going to start filling the rest of it in. And I'm going to follow the nice contour of the pear. When I get down here, I notice that it starts getting a little bit hard to punch because there are so many um, loops in here on the other side. So what I like to do is to reach underneath and pull the loops out of the way. Let me show you what I mean. From underneath what I'm doing is I'm taking my fingers and I'm pushing down those loops to get them out of the way while I work. And once you push them, um, they will stay like that much better. So you're kind of training those loops and then you can let go and punch, but you've just created a nice little opening for yourself. Now that I've pushed those loops out of the way, I have a nicer opening, a nicer channel to punch through. So I'm ready to keep going. So 
So see how I have that teeny little bit in there? I am going to fill that in because that will help to accentuate that nice curve of the bottom of the pear. And I'm just going to do three punches. I'll just help to bump up that bottom of that pear and give that nice little curve some emphasis. So I just did that because I get tired of getting stuck in that tight corner and it um, makes a sharp angle that will show up on the other side um, where you make a repetitive sharp point like that. So I'm just going to round it off and go back and fill that in later. get into these small areas you'll notice that it's harder to punch. Your needle doesn't go in quite as easily. That's normal. Just keep punching. You might have to punch a little bit harder, but that's how you know you're making a nice sturdy rug. So I'm done with the punching. I'm just going to have one look at it and see if I have any little holidays showing. I'll push those around and I'm going to feel the top and make sure I don't have any ends left to stuff through that I missed. There's one. I think that looks pretty good. Let's turn it over and look at the front side of the rug. It's always a bit of a shock because the side you work on looks nice and tidy and the other side is kind of messy. But it's easy to clean up and in my next video I'll show you how to get it all tidy and how to get that lettering nice and readable.